This is going to be a basic sensory system overview. And the reason why I chose a picture of the baby here is we're trying to explore the world around us. We typically use our sensory system to be able to perceive things. And this is how we go about learning about kind of what things touch, taste, look like, uh, and so on and so forth. So the sensory perception, the sensory uh, nervous system tells the central nervous system what's happening, what's going on, what, what are we being exposed to. As a result, we have sensory receptors, which are special, specialized sensory cells that detect changes inside as well as outside the body. So as much as we're trying to detect, you know, what color things are on the outside, we also want to have sensories on the inside of our body to help us tell our internal environment. We have sensory organs that are complex sensory receptors. Examples of those would be our eyes, our ears, our taste buds. Uh, this owl here has well-adapted ears since it hunts at night, so its sensory organ of ears is well-developed. Here's an example of our eyes being able to track what's around us. The path of sensory information, we have uh, stimulation, which is the physical stimulus that activates sensory receptors. This is the physical touch that's involved. Transduction is the converting of that stimulus into an action potential, you see here. The stimulus-gated ion channels in sensory neurons are opened or closed, and action potential gradient is created as positive and negative. This then allows the transmission, which is nerve impulses, to be conducted to the central nervous system. The overview of the sensory neuron information is, for example, here we have water coming down. We put our hand out. We want to sense what the temperature of that water is, so our sensory innings of the skin. That will then lead to action potential in the axons, is transferring that sensory information. Going up to the brain, a sensory axon enters the spinal cord where it again synapses with the brain. The sensory pathway continues with secondary neurons projecting to the thalamus, and the sensory pathway reaches the cerebral cortex for conscious perception. So now we're actually into the thought process. Is, it, is the water hot or is the water cold? In this case, an upper motor neuron from the cortex executes a motor command. This is now leaving the brain in red, going through the spinal cord. The upper motor neuron contacts a lower motor neuron in the spinal cord and through our synapse. And this ultimately is leading to the lower motor neuron causing contraction of the target skeletal muscles. And that contraction will cause that hand to kind of move up. And that could be away from if this water was too hot. So while this sounds like a lot of steps that are occurring, and there is quite a bit that is occurring, this occurs very quickly. That nerve impulse occurs at about 268-ish miles an hour, so it's a very quick process for this to occur. Uh, the path of sensory information, two types of sensory receptors. We have our exoreceptors, as the name implies. They sense stimulus in the external environment, such as touch, heat, or pressure. Introreceptors are sensed stimuli in the internal environment, in the gut or other internal organs. And as we see here, our free nerve endings are spread throughout. Uh, in this case, in the skin, this would be for sensing kind of the presence maybe of heat. Internal organs, we see them listed here. These all need um, senses and information that may be occurring. Even though we may not think we can feel them directly, the body needs to have that information. Sensing the internal environment, uh, vertebrates use many different sensory receptors to respond to changes in the internal environment. Examples of these would be temperature change, two nerve endings in the um, skin, one stimulated by cold, one by warmth. So you actually have a separate one. One just does not do temperature. One does hot, one does cold. Blood chemistry, receptors in our arteries to sense blood carbon dioxide levels. And pain, special nerve endings within tissue near the surface to sense for pain, which is an indication something's going wrong. We also have muscle contraction. Uh, sensory receptors called um, protoreceptors are embedded within the muscle and tendons to sense the stretch of muscle. Touch for pressure uh, receptors buried below the skin uh, for that tactile kind of um, touch reception. And blood pressure, neurons called uh, baroreceptors are in major arteries to either constrict or relax our arteries for blood pressure. Other types of sensory receptors that we may not sense potentially um, would be heat receptors. Uh, very evident in pit vipers, we see here a snake here that can locate warm prey using infrared radiation. These heat detecting pit organs will allow this snake to be able to find this mouse, which is looking here very warm. Magnetism, eels, sharks, and many birds orient themselves in relation to the Earth's magnetic field, allowing them to migrate in certain routes. 
This is why they're able to migrate over long distances. They have the sensory receptor of magnetism. Electricity is used by aquatic vertebrates to locate food and mates, and also it can be used by some terrestrial um, organisms here. We see here this the spiny anteaters also use electricity to help sense food. Another great link here for extreme vision and animal science to help you understand or develop a greater appreciation for different types of sensory systems more than just our own.